challenges. Uh, one of those challenges is that um, women are by far a minority in the political arena. So they seem to have to prove themselves um, where you have uh, a male candidate um, and not necessarily at the general election but even at the level of the party selection. You know you have a male candidate, you have a female. Um, the females tends to have to prove, prove herself that she can handle it, that she can handle the stresses of the job, um, that she can put in the time and the energy. Um, you know, there are folks who wonder if if, uh, if the lady is up to it because it might call for a certain level of aggression. So, you know, can you can you handle the aggression? Can you handle the backlash when the when the insults and the comments are thrown at you? You know, so people start to wonder that. They don't wonder when it's a guy who's who's uh, you know who's thrown his hat in the ring. For, for nomination. They assume he can roll with the punches, but a woman has to prove that she can roll with the punches. And then, you know, I think for many women to it's still to be able to prove that you can you can go one on one with the boys but still be a woman um, in all other spheres of your life. So when you go to church, when you go to PTA meetings and do that, you still have to be um, you know, you're not a guy. So you have to be able to take off that that hat. And, and put on a totally different persona uh, in, in an, when you're in a political arena. Um, the other thing, of course, is the challenge of, of caretaking because, like it or not, the caretaking rules still belong to the woman. Um, where I mean, I've been fortunate in that I've had support with with my family, with my uh, my, my children, and now with my my parents, my father as well. Um, but by and large, those caretaking roles still fall to the woman. I mean, again, I just mentioned my dad, and um, he's taken ill, and I'm the oldest daughter. So guess who is also looking after daddy along with everything else? So those are challenges. And if you cannot take your, if you cannot um, manage your caretaking roles and responsibilities because of your involvement in politics, then you're seen as um, perhaps a failure. You, you're seen as not being able to hack it because you should be able to, um, to if you're going into politics, if you're going to any career, you should still be able to, to take on those domestic um, and, and familiar responsibilities. So that, that's a challenge. Society still expects you to take on, on those responsibilities at the same time. Um, political service, well, I found from, uh, you know, sitting around the table with the guys and especially, say for example, at the level of cabinet where I serve now, um, there are two ladies in cabinet. Unfortunately, the other lady is the Minister of Foreign Affairs, so half the time she's, she's out. So for today, for example, you know, it was just me. Um, so I, I bring a perspective that's, that's different. Uh, I look at the world differently. I look at uh, especially some of our social, some of our social situations. I look at differently, and that's not to say that women are better at the social stuff and men are better at the uh, the hardcore political stuff. Because I haven't necessarily found that to be true either. Um, but I, I bring out a perspective that it perhaps is a little more holistic. I think I think that is what I've noticed. Uh, even with the other women who, when we sit around. Uh, campaign strategy or whatever. Uh, I think the women tend to bring a more holistic approach. Women's minds work differently from men and as much as they have to to rough it with the guys in, in their careers and political lives, they still think differently. You know, They can do the same things that a man needs to do but they think differently, their brains compartmentalize differently, they look at the world differently. Um, and I think women um, seem to be better at multitasking naturally than men and that's not to cry down men but again I, I think I think that we're, we're kind of made up differently you know so that for a woman 
uh, you know, to be managing several different shows at the same time is par for the course. You know, women do that, you know, uh, in managing their homes and their little children and then, you know, going out to the grocery and so on. You tend to be able to organize yourself better and multitask. And I think that is, that is something that's very useful, especially at the level of political leadership. For example, in the ministry where I am, I have to wear so many hats and juggle so many things. I'm not saying I do it perfectly. Uh, I think I wish there were two more of me I could do with a couple of clones. But um, I believe that um, I can manage my responsibilities without being as stressed. I mean, I look, at, I look at some of my male colleagues and I think they handle stress differently too. Um, and I think that's also important, the way we handle stress. Um, so, you know, and I think, I think some of the guys, you know, the, maybe, and because too, they, they, can, they go out late, they can be out long hours. You know, as I said, a woman, you still have your family responsibility. So it means I, I get in at a reasonable hour. Um, it means I get my sleep. Some of the male colleagues may not get their sleep. And so you see it showing on them over, over time. You know, they start to age, they start to put on weight and so on. Uh, I think a lot of that because, because of their lifestyle. I still have to maintain a certain lifestyle um, in the community, in the eyes of the community, the constituents who who uh, voted for me and in my family's eyes as well. I have to maintain a certain level of, of behavior and, and, um, and um, you know, that, that kind of thing allows me to still have a structured life. So, um, and, but all those I think are advantages that women bring. I don't think we have enough women in parliament or in, even put it in the political arena. Um, but I think that um, one of my challenges, for example, is you know, when there's an issue that arises, um, everybody would weigh in. And then essentially it's, well, let's hear the woman's perspective. Um, I want to see where um, you can have the woman's perspective, um, you know, just, just um, you expect to get the woman's perspective because there are enough of us around that you're not going to go without hearing it. Not nagging, you know, I, I sometimes men make me say, well, you know, she's going to nag and whatever. but. You know that there are enough women's voices heard in the political arena that you know it's not one woman having to pipe up to say, "Well, you know, you, you want to hear my view on this." No, you're going to get a woman's perspective because there are enough women involved in the process. Certainly, what I would like to see in Barbados is where. Um, ultimately where everybody can uh, can believe that they can achieve whatever it is you know they, they, they can think about um, I don't want to see any generation not the children not their parents uh, pigeonholed because well you know I can't do that I don't have the education I don't have the resources I don't have the wherewithal to do that but if you can if you can even imagine it then that we can have a society that supports each other at the level of the family, at the level of the community, at the level of government and government policy and the resources that are available there, not just in terms of education, which I know we've done well on, but on all others, other resources and facilities so that everybody can achieve and you know lead to that, that independence and, and self-sufficiency um, so that, you know, and it's not just about poverty, it's about purpose, you know, and, and fulfilling purpose. And I, I want to see a Barbados where everybody, young and old, would know that they have a purpose, um, you know, regardless of their station in life, and that they can follow, follow that purpose and, and see it through.